Okay, so we started recording. Welcome to the community scene number 15. And we have some demos. Yay. Okay, I can start uh, with my demos. Let me find how to share my screen. Share screen. Does it work? I see you. Okay. Yes. So, um, I will show uh, some new addition I added in uh, the option insecure options. So, uh, in this example, uh, the option image on hand disk were things which existed before. Um, so, that doesn't uh, change anything. And in this example, I can see uh, some restriction being applied to uh, the pod. On, um, I don't have the capability capsis betray, so I cannot see that directory. Um, uh, there is some further restriction on slashes slash fs, like we don't see anything in there. Um, now I will show you the same uh, command with uh, additional parameters. The first one is capabilities. Um, and with that, I should have uh, all the sections about capability disabled, which means I have all the capabilities. And I should be able to show the component of that. So it works. Um, so that's a way to run a privileged application by giving them all the capabilities. Uh, but still, I don't have access to this. Um, that's because in Rocket, we restrict access to some directories. Um, um, an example of such file is uh, this file, uh, which um, should be restricted. Uh, I cannot write on this file because it's restricted. But for some um, privileged containers, we would like to give additional uh, access to that kind of file. Um, I added a new option in insecure option. It's called um, path. And you give access to all the paths. And with that, I should not be restricted anymore. So I will check in uh, this address. And uh, I will try to write on a file which was restricted before. And this time it works. Um, so this implementation of with the new uh, flags, capability, and path on in insecure options is in uh, pull request. Uh, it's still on discussion because there are uh, uh, things to change. For example, uh, insecure option is a global option for the pod, so we cannot have, uh, with the way I implemented it, we cannot have different options for different uh, apps in the pod. Um, so that's it for the demo. Yeah. I'm clicking on stop share. Yeah, thanks, Alvin. Uh, looks very cool. Uh, any questions about this new soon to be in Rocket feature? Were you looking for feedback on something for your PR while we are at it or? Uh, yes, like um, the way I uh, implemented in that PR, uh, should we really do it uh, per application instead of per pod? And I don't know how to implement it because, because I implemented per pod, uh, I used um, parameters in the stage one or three point run. But if you want to do that per application instead of per pod, we cannot really do that anymore, so we will have to um, um, pass the information in a pod manifest. So for each app in the pod manifest, give some annotation. Um, well, do we want those annotations to be specified in AppSys spec or in somewhere else, or do we want that to be rocket specific? Um, that's something to discuss, I guess. My personal answer is that what what you implemented basically corresponds to what we were discussing before. So it's a, it's a global switch for the user to quickly try and disable 
if something doesn't work or if it needs to fine tune it better. So I will keep it as is. And regarding the Kubernetes one, I think we can discuss a bit more like what they really need to implement to have the privileged Boolean flag for the application and and follow up with something else basically. So I would not like merge the two concern into this PR and just like keep this one as is and and check the other one what we really need. So do you mean we should we could merge that as it is uh, before we finish the discussion about Kubernetes? Yes, exactly. Like for me, this one it's self-contained and it is already okay as is. I don't know why what anyone needs. So my concern there would be inconsistency between this and if we do do it on a per application basis and. I personally think that it is important to allow this per application as well, but I'm not sure what that will actually look like, so it would be bad to have this be strongly inconsistent with it or look weird beside it. Do you mean just in terms of the command line interface? Yeah, pretty much. I, I don't, I'm not advocating that we should block merging this, I'm just saying that's my biggest concern with this, is just making sure that we're okay with this interface alongside some unknown interface. From, from my point of view, we already have some of the semantic that you need in Kubernetes uh, for per application overriding, for example, for capabilities and second. Uh, maybe we just need to add also there are some kind of wildcard for specifying I want to enable also uh, any other mechanism that we implement in the future. And that part is missing right now. And we should like discuss a bit more like how to design it and how to how we want to get there. But, but I think that this is another switch, which is like a global one overriding all applications. It is already okay as this, and the other one, it's something that just needs to be done in a way which is consistent with this one. I think it's feasible later. Sounds good to me. I wonder if the UI will be quite complex if we have an uh, install option, which is level and then we have a new option for uh, app level and on the command line there will maybe potentially a lot of things yeah. we already have some weird situation with the mounts thing where, where mounts can be pod level or app level depending on if they are before the app or after a, a particular app so yeah I don't know hmm. I mean, I think that's as good as you can get for doing this stuff, specifying the stuff on the command line. Or maybe we can make it, if we want it to be per app, we can make it only uh, pod, manifest, uh, pod manifest feature. Yeah, I don't know. We should discuss this thing. You mean there people generate a pod manifest to do per app stuff? Yeah, for example, things like the uh, read only root effects can only be specified in a pod manifest right now. So, I mean, not exposing it to the end user, but only a bit for things like Kubernetes or, yeah, things like that. And that's also kind of a good thing in that you can always add command line flags later, and you already have the framework to build on it. Exactly. I don't know, we can talk on, on the issue. Um, okay, anything else about this feature? Yes. I think I was talking about uh, this last time. Uh, how if we do, if we add those flags uh, globally, how they are should be handled by uh, KVM flavor. We should uh, just return error message or something else. I didn't so full port request, so I don't know how it's implemented. I'm looking at this just now. How it's implemented is uh, isolation between the application stage two and the system D in stage one. Uh, so that's um, uh, both in uh, KVM and um, the default and spawn flavor. Um, so isolation between stage two and stage one is the same thing. So I don't think that. Uh, yeah, actually, much different. But one could argue that 
it doesn't really make much sense to uh, restrict these things on the KVM flavor because you already have an hypervisor. So this is something like an UI, uh, UX uh, question. Or, yeah. Exactly. I see that this uh, in some part implemented it's stage zero, so we can just check if this is KVM flavor and then return message that this is not supported with uh, our flavor and then quit. Uh, right. And, uh, because at the moment it's implemented as country print, so it's uh, calling the run entry print from stage one with the parameter. Um, the entry print could return an error if it doesn't want to execute with that parameter. Right. So the run entry point for KVM can say, uh, this doesn't make sense for my flavor, so return an error. That's something you could do. Maybe one suggestion that we had last time, but this would probably mean a little bit more work to do a notion of state specific parameters, right? Can you say again? Sorry, I did not get it. Um, so another another possibility would be to introduce some notion of state specific parameters, um, such that, you know, for instance, this setting doesn't make really sense in the context of KVM. <coughs> And it probably doesn't make any sense at all for the fly flavor. So one possibility that we discussed the last time, we can maybe do it as a separate suggestion or PR um, to introduce the possibility for stages to promote their own command line options. And this would maybe solve these kinds of discussions. What to do if a stage does not support this or that command line option. That could be done with uh, stage one advertising in the manifest, some annotation to say I support this or I don't support that. Yeah, for instance, yeah. For instance, that would be a good idea to have some metadata in the stage one manifest which specifies in a way those command line options. I, um, maybe we can do this as a follow-up. Um, and uh, we can all set up an issue explaining the intention. Right. Well, when did you try run this with uh, KVM flavor? Because if we introduce those flags and someone will try this with KVM flavor, I don't know how it would be handled at this moment. So at the moment, I um, so the uh, API between stage zero and stage one is version, and um, with that change, I changed the version. Current version was version two, and I changed it to version three. And because uh, the KVM flavor is still at version two, it means uh, stage zero will not try to wipe this flag to stage one because it knows it doesn't support it. Um, so it will say, uh, uh, I've not tried it, but it should return an error to say uh, stage one doesn't support that. Mm -hmm. So I have a question. If we implement this suggestion by Sergius, uh, what is the benefit actually uh, against just returning an error? I Meaning, if you design a stage one and you get a flag that you don't understand, you return an error. Uh, because if it is uh, something you don't understand, you will return an error which is not really user friendly. You will say, okay, this flag is not recognized, but uh, that flag is something internal to stage one, so the user doesn't really know what it means. Mm, right. But if we are, if stage zero is knows whether stage one uh, supports that flag, then we will not be in that situation and we can return an error which is uh, better understandable by the user. Okay. Yeah, I guess I was assuming that you know everything is internal now, stage one, all the stage ones, but it makes sense for external stage ones and for making yeah synchronization work. Yeah, I mean it. It would be an internal contract anyways, right? So. so. Um, but it kind of makes sense because we have a lot of discussions around fly. And we will get more and more discussions also and, and subtle differences, uh, nuances between the KVM and the stage one flavor. So I, I guess we will have this more and more. And instead of you know having built tags which spit out errors per, per stage, we could uh, have some sort of contract and then also um, People working on different stage one flavors have also the freedom to add arbitrary command line options 
without polluting the you know other other stage one implementations. Okay, sounds good. Okay, I guess we're finished with this topic, unless somebody says something. Okay. Um, next item is about QMO. So JJ, you wanna uh, talk about it? Yes, and what about the Ukash? Uh, status of KVM networks first. Ukash, yeah. that's all right. I made that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, sure. Hi. Uh, quick update from my side. I've got pending request that link library adding missing flags to top creation. I've got pending pull requests in CNI repository uh, when we're discussing the, the approach there. And on my local machine, I've got running solution with running Archive with KVM and my changes in the code in both in CNI and Netlink and I'm able to uh, run machine with default restrictive network because I was working only for point-to-point -point plugin. And I was able to start this network with bypassing all the KVM specific function replacing CNI functionality. So the work is progressing here, uh, and now uh, I will wait for the review from CNI devs and merging the, the my commit into the Netlink library. And I, in the meantime, I will work on the bridge plugin, so I believe it will be most useful in the uh, for the broader audience. And that's all. Okay, cool. Thanks. Looking forward to getting this code in CNI and getting rid of it in Rugged. <laughs> yeah, sure. No questions? Um, I guess we have to wait for reviews. I mean, I'm, I don't really know much about the networking code. Anybody have questions? <coughs> okay. So, uh, about QMO work, uh, okay, uh, at the beginning I would like to thank you all for the whole testing and reviewing my QMO pull request, uh, it's really worked for me. Uh, so thank you, and uh, I would like to show you my uh, idea for uh, introducing QMU in the context of flavors, but at first uh, let me ask you, uh, what about the dependencies? Because uh, QMU uh, has a couple of dependencies. For example, the library zlib static and a proper version of Python and something like this. And my question is simple. Do we want to uh, check the dependencies during the configuring of Racket or uh, we're just making a note to be sure that for third party projects, uh, dependencies needs to be solved before building uh, a Racket with QMU? There was a comment by Krzysztof I think. Um, I don't know for the official release, but do you want as well that to be in distribution like Fedora and Debian and others? Mm. For now, I'm thinking just for checking, uh, for example, the proper version of Python for the libraries uh, that is needed to build QMU. <coughs> oh, is it a build time dependency? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, for example, um, on my system, Python is Python 3 and I have a Python 2 thing, yeah. uh, so things like that. And um, maybe if we can check on Rocket, we can print a friendly message saying, okay, pass this option to use this Python or whatever. Or the static thing, the, the promise we had compiling, uh, that it was were fixed by removing the static thing. Yeah, uh, I actually have a question about that. Um, why do you pass static? Is it really needed? Uh, I actually investigating this. It works without static in my machine. I don't remember why I put this there, so <laughs> uh, I would like to check it. I will check yeah. it. Because as long as we put all the libraries uh, in stage one, it should be fine, I think. Uh, sorry, one more time. As long as you put the, li the linked libraries on stage one, it should be fine. I, I guess you don't need static. 
Mm, okay. Okay. So, uh, what about the dependencies? Because uh, I saw the comment uh, that uh, Trzesimir said that he remembers actually about removing the third-party dependencies. So I thought that maybe there is uh, some kind of I don't know official policy of these dependencies or your internal ideas. I think what we do is we just document the dependencies and if it's a build time thing, then the developers have to figure out how to solve them. Are you just talking about build dependencies or runtime as well? Uh, build. Uh, build dependencies for the QMU, for the kind of third party. Pro okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> I think you should just document them for the moment, like we are doing for the other stage one, which is the way to keep everything independent. Uh, otherwise, people cannot like build rocket at all in system. They have a lot of dependencies, like that leave static. And I think that if you remove the static option to QEM, you also get rid of the Zlib static dependencies. So I don't know, but then we have to check like how do we build the cave, the key in the sorry the QEM page one. Uh, where do we pick the dependencies from if we go to the dynamic uh, into the dynamic way? Uh, okay, so. Uh I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I'm from uh, the public. Okay. Uh, so uh, I will just document those dependencies, and uh, uh, we will see what will be, what we will do it in the later work. Yeah, and please remove the static thing. <laughs> Okay, okay, I will. Uh, okay, uh, the second thing, uh, which is, let's say, uh, let's say problematic, this is the idea of how, uh, of how to introduce QMO as a separate flavor or as a same flavor, uh, or the single flavor, KVM flavor, just with uh, setting up the hypervisor. Uh, my current goal request uh, contains the version where we are uh, just uh, typing the hypervisor and the QM is uh, either with the QMU support or with the LKVM support. Uh, it's not a good idea uh, because we can't uh, have a multi multi runtime with QMU and uh, LKVM on the same machine. We've got to reboot, uh, re rebuild a uh, racket. And in my opinion, the separate flavor is also not a good idea because the uh, whole, uh, whole work is uh, pretty similar. So uh, my idea is to do something between the uh, separate flavors and the same flavors. And let me share my screen. I got a single slide where I described this. Uh, uh, Desktop two. Okay. Okay, you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Uh, we are choosing in the configure part uh, images we want to have. We use, for example, default flavor as a KVM in this line. And we are specifying stage one KVM hypervisors as LKVM and QMU. And then we have uh, two images built uh, for stage one KVM for LKVM hypervisor and also for QMU hypervisor. And, uh, uh, this, ima this image could uh, contain a pointed hypervisor as the link. It's, it's just an idea, it's pretty similar to. Uh, flavor, uh, the ACI image, but uh, we will just check what hypervisor uh, we are using in this in, uh, in the init mark. And uh, it has a, a positive side because we in flavor, we can build QMU and LKVM on the same machine and use on the same machine. 
and yes. it would be easier also to add another hypervisors. And it will help. Um, it looks good to me. And for the user point of view, they would just have to specify whether they use the stage one KVM LKVM dot SCI or stage one dash KVM dash QMU dot SCI. Uh, excuse me, could you repeat? Uh, from the user point of view, to decide which one yes. to use, they will just have to specify which stage one SCI to use. Uh, no, no, we will uh, for the user. A uh, user will uh, specify uh, what images uh, he wants to get uh, built. Uh, by default, it could be two images. It could be LKVM and QMU also. I think but you meant the, the user that wants to run. Uh, ah, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I guess on, in these two SCI files, there will be a lot of things in command, but that's okay. Like most of the file will be the same. Yeah, that's the case with CoreOS and KVM flavors too. <laughs> Actually, all the files except this simlink. Yeah. The simlink is just an idea. It could be done another mm -hmm. way. Yeah, I think just I should to get rid of it. But yeah, the change was, was going to be basically the QMO or KVM binaries. And yeah, the simlink. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, if there's no any additional questions, that's all from my side. I have a question about QMO in general. So, but before that, anybody has any questions on this uh, building thing? Seems not. Um, have you looked at the issue of uh, control C in interactive pods? Uh, yes, I'm. Assign ah yeah uh, control C oh yeah you mentioned about this in comments right yeah I think it's a uh, pretty annoying if you are running an interactive yes, shell you yes, press yes, control yes. and things exit so have you looked into this issue uh, yes I'm tracking this I check this out I reproduce it <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> uh, <laughs> it's quite easy to reproduce it but uh, haven't looked at this deeply for now. Okay, I will consider that as a blocker because it's a pretty common use case. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I guess it's just a matter of configuring QMO, but I don't really know how to do that. It's not a regression in LKVM, right? It's only in the new... Yeah, only in the QMO okay. uh, thing. Okay. I'm tracking all the issues, all the comments. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, thank you. Mm, okay. Is there anything else in the agenda? Uh, rocket monitors results. Okay. Derek, you want to talk about it? Mm, no, I think that was my topic. I was yours. Okay. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I just associate the rocket monitor with Derek. <laughs> Sorry, give me a second. Technical <laughs> Where is the uh, button for sharing the screen? Uh, at the bottom of the, on the, on the middle. It's too visible actually to see it. <laughs> the screen. Oh, yeah. Okay, we uh, run some tests with uh, Rocket Monitor to see how loops uh, start and stop time of uh, different flavors. So as you can see, uh, there is no big difference between starting uh, Q LQVM, QMO, and CoreOS. <coughs> and there is only one strange thing. This is those are those spikes here. And here, uh, don't know why CoreOS flavor started spawning so slowly. And uh, another thing is, like you can see, this uh, ch chart is uh, constant. Uh, time of uh, starting uh, container is uh, steadily rising. And we think this could be a problem with, uh, the, with disk 
because we've constantly stopping and starting a container. We are testing this uh, hard drive IO, so this could uh, influence the start time of uh, runtime. As for the stopping container, uh, same, we have uh, the same results for LQVM and QMU and uh, stopping uh, CoreOS flavor takes a lot of more time. Uh, probably because there is a recurrency killing processes when, but in term, in the case of uh, hypervisor uh, flavors, uh, we just need to kill one uh, process but I'm not quite sure. And uh, we, ha we can see the same uh, situation. The stop time is uh, constantly growing. Almost uh, two times after two iter 200 iteration. Okay, do you have uh, the code to reproduce this? Um, what do you mean code reproduces? I mean, is, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm missing in some context. Is there already a stop and start test in Rocket Monitor? Yes, what uh, I got it, it one month ago. We are just uh, spawning this with uh, one of those as uh, mem stressor, CPU stressor, or anything we have. Uh, <coughs> Any one of those stressors and the rocket monitor is gathering uh, start and stop time of container. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, we will probably work on those uh, tests uh, further. Michal and uh, Dominika will be working on more complex uh, test case because uh, starting and stopping uh, one container 200 times is not the best. Best case. We probably want to see uh, how it will be looking like when we start, uh, for example, 50 containers at once, and how then uh, start and stop time will differ. I have a question on uh, the start time. So I see it's about between one and two milliseconds in most of the time. Uh, is it between the time that uh, you start the command rocket and when it's ready? How do you how do you decide when to start and stop the timer? It's from the moment when command rocket uh, run was uh, called to the moment when uh, application was start inside the pod. So, for example, it includes the time to set up, to render the file system, or to mount the overlay FS? Uh, we need to add some additional timing uh, just to know when the mounting uh, was uh, ended and when uh, extracting files was ended. Because we are thinking uh, it's quite strange that uh, CoreOS and KVM flavor has the uh, same start time. So the, our guess is that uh, most of the time is spent with uh, unpacking uh, images, uh, copying them, and uh, mounting file systems. Yes. I was wondering if you use the option um, on disk, insecure option on disk, so that it doesn't uh, uh, check the table again. No, I don't think that option was used. Okay, so there are several things. Like, um, okay, it's kind of hard to explain. But if you if you don't have the image, the stage one image on the CAS, and it depend depending on how to you build Rocket, it might be that it's reading the file from disk instead of getting it from the CAS. And also what Adam mentioned, the on disk, if you don't specify the insecure option on disk, it will uh, check the hash of the image. But those are things that are done for both uh, CoreOS and KVM stage one, so I don't see how it should influence that, unless you're yeah, checking different things with different options or something. 
no the options are the same for both flavors. They are hard coded in a racket monitor at this moment. Yeah. I think it will be helpful if you could write some document or in the issue exactly how you do the test so we can actually see uh, what can be wrong. Like okay. just, just some step list or a list of steps or something. Okay, I will prepare the issue on GitHub. Yeah, thanks, I will help a lot. And how about the slow increase in the start time? Uh, I guess we don't do garbage collecting of the old parts. Uh, we are doing garbage collecting. Because without garbage collecting, that was almost four times. Uh, at the end, we have almost four times uh, high, higher start time than at the beginning. Without garbage collection. So garbage collection helped, but still there is uh, okay. almost two time difference before the beginning and the end. We we'll also need to look at this. Okay. I was wondering if uh, after 200 iterations, there will be 200 times the overlay less mounted somewhere on the file system. It's not the case because you use garbage collecting at right. Mm, I guess, yeah. Uh, Alban, could you repeat? Um, I was wondering if uh, after 200 iterations on the file system, there will be 200 months of overlay FS for the, um, each of the 200 uh, pods you started. But shouldn't be months cleaned after uh, garbage collecting? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. What, that, was, that was what he was saying. That, uh, it doesn't make sense because you are garbage collection. Okay. Garbage collection. Okay, definitely something to, to look into. And thanks for doing the, the tests and looking forward to this issue with the uh, steps. Okay. Thank you. Mm, okay. I guess that's it. Anybody else has anything to say? About anything? Related to rocket, hopefully? <laughs> Related to rocket, no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess we can stop here. Thanks a lot, uh, everybody, and yeah, see you in the next sync. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye. 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 Bye.